So in this video, we're going to review these N-Phase microinverters. We're going to give you all the technical specifications you need, information on the product, where it's going to be suitable for your home, when to use them, when not to use them, how much they cost and where you can buy them. So what is an inverter or specifically a microinverter? Well, when you have a solar panel on your roof here, that will capture energy from the sun and it will convert that energy into something called DC current, so direct current. Now in our homes in the UK, our electrical systems and most of our appliances are set up for AC, alternating current, and therefore if we just run a cable off our roof, to our plug sockets, we couldn't use that energy. We need something called an inverter and an inverter's job is simply to convert DC to AC so we can use it in our properties. Now, when you come to inverters, you've generally got three choices and they're given names and classifications to sort of generations. So generation one inverters, if you think back to 10, 15 years ago, you had a big inverter, central, not very smart, and its literal purpose was just to convert DC to AC. And then about 10 years later, things moved on with the introduction of hybrid inverters. So you'll probably had quotes of solar, you've probably heard of something called a hybrid 3.6, a hybrid five kilowatt. And essentially a hybrid inverter is one side converts a, say DC to AC and the other side allows energy to transfer straight into a battery in a DC current and then it manages and clips the power depending on the rating of the inverter. And then generation three technology is a microinverter which is one of these. So a microinverter is a bit different to a hybrid inverter in that you have one per panel and that's because you convert the energy locally on the roof from DC to AC send it down, use it straight in your home. And what it also gives you is individual control of all your panels. So with a string inverter, all your panels are gonna be linked together. And what happens is if one panel gets shading or one panel goes down, the rest of the array either drops performance or turns off completely. With a microinverter, each of your panel essentially becomes its own power plant. So there are multiple brands on the market from different microinverters that you can purchase. Now here at Heatable, we only fit Enphase and essentially it's because Enphase are the market leaders in this microinverter space. They're a NASDAQ company based in the States and they've got over a million hours of testing on their products. So in terms of their R&D and their performance, it's about as good as it gets. And they have a full range of products depending on the application. We only fit this product, this is the IQ7 Plus. And the reason we fit the IQ7 Plus is it's been specifically, or our panel rather, has been specifically built around this product to give optimum performance. But what are the features of an IQ7 Plus and how does it differ from the rest of the range? So the three models are, you've got the IQ7 Plus, which is this one here, you've got the A and you've got the X. And the difference between all three microinverters is just its rated output in terms of AC watts. So this Plus model will do a peak of 295 watts output. The A will give you 366 and the X gives you 325. So the obvious question is, why do we use the plus when we could use the A and get 366 watts? And it's all to do with the environment in the UK. So when you look at a panel and you see its performance or its output, a question that might come into your head is, this panel here, this is our REA Fusion 2 Bifacial, 420 watt, if you put a 290 watt inverter on that, surely you've lost 130 watts of performance with that panel, it's pointless, why have you done it? Well, there is a good reason, the reason we do it, and there's a great answer, and that is the rating of a panel is done in something called STC, so standard test conditions, and that's where a panel like this will be put in a laboratory, there'll be a light set on that panel, and they'll give it a rating based on a thousand watts per meter squared. Now here in the UK, we rarely ever get a thousand watts per meter square of sunlight. And if we do, it's for seconds or minutes at a time in summer in peak sort of midday sun. 
Everywhere else, we get between six and 700 watts per meter, and therefore a 420 watt panel is rarely ever gonna get up to 420 watts, and it's all about its mid-belt performance. Now, what's also important in the UK is when it's cloudy and you're down to sort of 200 watts a meter, this IQ7 Plus can take advantage of that low light, activate and turn on. And that's because it can turn on here. If you think about a A, that might turn on here and an X might turn on there, which means at lower light, you don't get activation, you don't get performance. You might get a bit more peak power up top, but over a 12 month period using some end phase data, they conducted a study using an IQ7 Plus versus an A on a 415 watt panel and the clipping losses between the Plus and the A, even though they were in the UK, was less than 0.46 of a percent. So there is nothing in it. And what you gain with this product is that low light performance. So don't let it put you off. Obviously, when you're researching solar, you're going to want the most efficiency you can from your system, and you may be put off by a top limit of 295 watts, but it's perfectly matched for the UK environment. And overall, against a DC system, you'll get about 18% more generation with this system compared to a traditional string inverter. Another critical consideration when choosing your inverter would also be safety. So DC panels using DC string inverters require DC cables to run from your roof space down your property and into wherever your inverter is going to be located. Now DC systems work at high voltage. So if you've got a 10 pound array, that could be given out as much as 450 volts that's gonna get transferred down those cables and there's no way to earth a DC cable. And that's why when you'll see mishaps with solar, it's always DC cables arcing out. When you install microinverters, your risk or your length of DC cable that we need to manage is about that much on the panel and then straight into the inverter here. Everything that comes out thereafter is AC. So the power that runs from your roof down to your fuse board is AC and what that means is it's a two core with an earth and it's protected by RCD. So we hope that was a useful video in giving you some further information about these end phase microinverters. Now if you're in the market for a solar system, you want to have one of these systems installed in your property, then head over to heatable.co.uk where you'll be able to use our unique design tool and you'll be able to get a quote to have these REA Fusion 2 panels with these end phase IQ7s installed in your home for a fixed online price.